Hi, Andy. Print quality. Hiya. Is the finished print quality is so much better. It's mm-hmm. unbelievable. Um, mm. That's the red bit there that you can see. Mm-hmm. They give you that. It's crap. Um, and there's a French guy that I was talking to on Facebook. He designed the unit I'm printing. Mm-hmm. This, this, this is a one that's already done. It is so smooth. It is. It's unbelievable. Um, mm. I put my hand in the white. The quality of the image goes. I don't know if you can tell that or not. But it. Oh. Yes, it's got a few lines on it, but it is silky soft, smooth. So, so um, what I'm, the cause of that? Sorry, I come in a bit late there. That's all right. It, no, it's not. It's not. A, it's not a fault. It, I'm really, really impressed with what I've done to my printer. Um, yeah, no, that's, was, sorry, uh, I, I wasn't suggesting it was a fault. Um, <laughs> I was wondering how you achieve that. Is it very high, you know, very um, fine print layers or, or what? No, no, this, this is, uh, I haven't changed anything on the, the, the print settings. Yeah. Um, 2.8 mil um, layers, nothing, nothing fantastic, uh, but nothing, you know, rough and nasty. What I've done is... I've fitted the direct drive unit. Oh, I see. Right. Okay, yeah. That, this is the Micro Swift direct drive unit mm-hmm. that I, 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 I was that impressed I bought another one uh, from my other printer, all right, which is going to be installed uh, probably tomorrow now because I'm too tired to do it tonight. Hmm. Um, it's, um, if I go over to the other one, I don't know if you can how long the cable is on this. I'm not having a normal PC tonight. I'm actually having at the PC I use to do all my work on. Just let me move this tray. That's not my lunch tray. That's my tool tray for doing this. The mods. <laughs> so you get a better idea uh, of um, the kit I've done as well. Mm-hmm. So this is it's got everything inside it now. Instead of having the two separate units. Everything's all integrated inside the base. So it raises, it raises it up by about two inches, but it doesn't matter because everything's inside. You can have a draw as well, a nice printed 3D draw. Nice. But uh, that's the original header unit, mm-hmm. print head system. Um, so all of that blue part, the blue bar at the back there comes off. Right. There you go. So all of that blue comes off pretty much. Um, and then you just put on the micro drive, uh, the micro switch direct drive unit, takes a stepper motor off the back of the printer. So you haven't got to go and buy another stepper motor. Um, I also put on, uh, as you can see, the, the red BL touch mm-hmm. um, unit. Um, I've got separate firmware that I downloaded from a guy on Facebook. Who specialises in Creality um, printers, firmware solutions? Um, his firmware is just amazing. Um, he, he won't release source code, but he's happy to give anybody and everybody a copy of his firmware. Um, it's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. He's educating in the open source ways, then, doesn't he? <laughs> he? He does, but I can understand why he's done it. Hmm. Um, he's not charging for it. Um, if you if you really really want a, his source code, he will give it to you. Um, but he said I'm not willy nilly giving out my source code mm-hmm. for the firmware, uh, which I can I can totally understand. So yeah. what his his firmware is based on what then? It's it's Merlin, usual Merlin stuff. He's breaking um, but, all then. And well, it's totally open source that is, isn't it? It is. Yeah, he he can't do that. He's not allowed to. Yeah. He's well, giving I mean, it to you, he has to give it to everyone, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's his problem, isn't it? Not mine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, if, if the um if the Merlin um uh, developers decide to pursue him on that, um he will have to release it. I guess you know he might get away yeah. with it. But, yeah, but technically yeah. speaking, uh well, I believe um Merlin's under a GPL uh license isn't it mm-hmm. so yes it is, uh, yeah. if, if yeah. it is then um what he's doing is is contra to the terms of the gpl yeah 
Um, I mean, all, he, all he's really doing to it is he added a load of functions for bed leveling. Yeah. Um, changed a lot of the work, a lot of the things that you need to do for when you're adding extras like direct drive. Yeah. Um, a, lot, a lot of direct drive kits ask you to reverse the plus and minus for the way you've put um, the stepper motor at the back. It's in the wrong orientation. Oh, I he, see. Yeah. He does it in the firmware. Um, so you haven't got to mess around with any cables or anything. Um, I just can't say how much I am impressed um, by. I know what this printer is capable of, um, yeah. and, I, and, it, and it wasn't brilliant. This I used to do my PTG stuff on this printer because PLA just came out crap. <laughs> Strange way around that, isn't it? Because normally it's PLA yeah, is yeah. perfect and PTG is crap. Um, and this is producing. All right, it's only the second print it's doing now that I've done on it, but just because just use his firmware, got a piece this piece from Thingverse and printed it. And the quality is just immense, you know. Um, I haven't been in it as long as you guys have, but I know quality print when I see quality print. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, you know, you, you probably think that we're all experts, but that isn't true. I mean, Emily's an expert. Had, we're all learning all the time. Yeah, yeah. I know. Uh, some of us are greener than, than you might think. I mean, myself, for instance, the, the first... 3D printer that I've ever used was the one at the Makerspace. Right. I knew I knew I wanted one for years, but uh, so I can only really claim to have a couple of years, not mm. even a couple of years of experience with 3D printers. Mm. Emily's had about four years, five years, maybe. I got was my it? first printer five years ago. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. that doesn't so, mean so, I, like you know, I'm not an expert on it. That. My first yeah. printer basically made nothing useful at all a bit like me um but then again it was the first cheapest chinese printer on the market you know you're expected to have yeah. a lot of issues yeah but you know it's um i, I think that what, what i'm really trying to say is that yeah. you know don't do yourself down for no, no, no. and don't don't think that people everyone here knows mm. more than you do because um experience counts <laughs> <laughs> and you, you know you've done quite a lot of stuff and it, 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 yes it does i mean I'm, I'm a firm believer you know experience counts and everything um i'm not i'm not trying to do myself down i don't i don't profess to be an expert really in any of this stuff mm -hmm. you know i'm trying to stay behind think, it a bit more yeah so, yeah I, mean, I think we all have our domains of yeah. um expertise um but mm -hmm. generally speaking people won't say oh yeah i don't don't mess with me i i know what i'm talking about i know all about this yeah sounds most like most people person. got enough humility to to say to realize that they, there's always stuff to learn the people who, uh, uh, yeah. who do act like that actually probably know the least <laughs> yeah yeah a little bit of information is dangerous for some of those people mm. yeah as um paul weller said the more the more i know the less i understand <laughs> yeah um one of my That's colleagues uh, was showing me something interesting last week. So he, he also has a 3D printer. I think it's an Ender 3 or a CR10, okay. something like that. Um, there we go. And uh, he was doing aesthetic prints for, you know, tabletop uh, RPGs and that kind of thing. Yeah. You know, little dice towers and dungeons and stuff. Yeah. Um, got some really high quality models from uh had to actually purchase them from from these these different sources um but he found the best results by actually going like ridiculously slowly with the printer mm. so i normally i normally push the work uh cr10s up to about 100 mils per second for uh the wall which is pretty fast for a stock cr10 I go about 80 on my Ender 3. Most people do 60, I think, mils a sec. And yeah, I, think um, I think these are, these are doing 60, I think. Yeah, somewhere. the default's normally around 60 for the for the wall. Um, whereas my colleague was doing about 20 mils. <laughs> 20 millimetres per second for the wall. Sorry, about... this, this is um, coming out at 50, not 60. Mm. Very yeah. Slow. yeah, I guess when you do... When you try to do things at high speed, you have to accept that 
the accuracy is going to suffer. You know, yeah. you know, yeah. from driving a car that trying to go round a roundabout at seventy is not going to work. No. It you, you got if you manage to do it, you're going to be scraping the sides. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and obviously, so moving any there. mass at high speed yeah. going to result I mean, in you know yeah, the low speed plus the very very fine layer height did result in you know a reasonably sized mm. model taking literal days to print but the the quality of it and the um the aesthetic look of it afterwards is like yeah. immense it's incredible uh, amazing yeah i wouldn't it would never really have occurred to me no. to attempt that kind of like, thing because stuff Having like done... overhangs as well are so much better when you do them so slowly at such a fine layer height. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah i was quite impressed with that bell i printed up last week yeah the, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. the uh the i mean yes the bell was was good and i was really impressed with that but i was also impressed with which i didn't show you is, um was the, the stand it sits on hmm. the it's got a completely flat overhang halfway up it mm -hmm. um I've never seen the printer do it properly without without support. There's no support on this tool. Hmm. One second, I'm I'm being hailed. I'm no have to call for a second. Yeah, just meet yourself. Okay, you're trying to do the washing up, is it? <laughs> no, I I'll be back in a sec. I just yeah, no worries, no worries, no worries. But yeah, it's an interesting one. That we always learn something new. Yeah, I'm quite, I mean, I am. Impre I wasn't impressed with it to start with building the Micro Swiss kit up. Mm. And nowhere in the instructions it says to you, you need a bigger belt. Mm. Nowhere. So I had to wait for Amazon to come the following day with a, a, a real belt, a belt reel, um, which arrived at quarter past nine last night. Mm. So, yeah, not impressed with that. Their, their delivery is shocking at Christmas time. Yeah, yeah, well. The world and his wife are doing it, aren't they? Well, exactly. Yeah, I still need to finish yeah. off my Christmas purchases. But uh, I'm hoping to go into the Telford town centre, the shopping centre. Uh, just, just do one last excursion, I think. it's. Uh, I haven't been in there for months. I haven't been in there since, uh, since COVID hit in March. Oh, so, yeah. I think I think I, I went. I think I've been in there once since COVID, maybe, maybe twice. But I only go if there's a certain buggy available for me, hmm. uh, because I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a small fat bastard hmm. that need, needs a four wheeler, and I, I always make sure they got a four wheeler in for it before I go in. Mm -hmm. You're right, Andy. Yeah, just uh, Michelle forgot that I was on a call. She, the, our clock upstairs is really badly out. It's one of these. Um, atomic clock tied things and it shockingly loses time by a <laughs> massive amount. Time? Yeah. I don't, how it's supposed to be tied to the atomic clock, so but anyway. She said, Oh well I thought your call started at eight. I said, Well yeah it did. What do you mean it did? Well yeah it's <laughs> so I've been going about ten minutes. <laughs> yeah. Oh right, did you feed the cat? Yeah I fed the cat don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, -ho. yeah. Oh well. That's that's why I was designing that that replacement one. If you remember, hmm? the clock. Oh, you that know, the, one. Yeah. Um. I still have to solve that hum problem. And if if I can solve that hum problem, then I can get that finished. Hmm. Um, Paul, you won't know about that. Um, I've been now for about a year making a um, clock radio that's going to be an, an internet clock radio um, and I 3D printed my own massive seven segment um, display I say massive it's only the, well, like the display is about uh, an inch and a half I think mm. um, uh, but I literally made the um, the seven segment displays which was because I couldn't get the size I needed, uh, right. get much larger, or not big enough, and so I thought, ah, it can't be that hard, can it? <laughs> Learn a lot on that. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, it, it, how it, hard it, can it be? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was one of those for sure. Um, uh, but 
the problem that I've ended up with is that I've got a little mono sound amp to drive a speaker coming out of a Raspberry Pi and right. um, I've got a massive hum problem and okay. even with Emily and Chris's help we've not managed to solve the hum problem um, so I haven't finished it and that's really I, I thought like it was only a couple of weeks until it's ready and done and it's like that was before lockdown man yeah we'll have to take another look at that I think yeah I think um, I might just have to replace the uh, the amplification stage with something else maybe USB powered or something like that hmm. just need something that can drive a mono speaker yeah uh, so. Maybe see if you can salvage something out of a pair of um, computer monitor speakers. Yeah, possibly so. Well, th the, the speaker that's in it at the moment is salvaged out of a Sound Blaster, mm. original Sound Blaster speaker set. Mm -hmm. um, so it's quite a decent speaker. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the speaker is obviously not in, not, nothing to do with the hum. Yeah, exactly. Ah, well. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Buzz. Yeah. Um, you got the old ferrite on it, haven't you? Sorry? you got ferrites on all over the place on it, have you? Um, no, we haven't got chokes on it. Um, I did think of that, but it's it seems to be line noise being induced by the Raspberry Pi so I'm not sure that chokes would do the job we did discuss chokes actually at one point didn't we, we did. um, we've got I, I've got chokes secreted around uh, recovered from printers and things um, maybe we should try some chokes yeah um, I've got tons of them for me because of the amateur radio stuff that I do oh right um, so if you if you need any uh, small large ones whatever micro ones I've got so I probably got a box of them somewhere. Oh, right, yeah. Mm. Yeah, maybe we'll open up a discussion on on that then because I do want to get it finished. Um, it's one of those ones that I was really enthusiastic up to the point that I hit this roadblock and then other stuff happened. So I was like, well, yeah. it's got to be resurrected because I, I did a massive amount of work on it and pulled in a, a lot of help from various people, Emily included, um, Chris and well, uh, Scott as well. So mm -hmm. yeah, quite a lot of people have helped me overcome some humps in the road with that. But yeah. the hum, we just never managed to get over. We started recording yet? Yes, we have. I have. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to stop my video. Yeah, no worries. No worries. How the hell do you stop it? <laughs> ah, that's great. Uh, is it on the bottom? Yeah, there you, we got go. it. you got it. Oh, it's your, your screen. Your screen. Yeah. Yeah. But it's uh, it's like that a lot yeah. with projects, isn't it? Really, you 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 encounter something, and especially if there's no stakeholders other than yourself, or in Andy's case, his partner, um, you uh, you just let it fall by the wayside. Same what happened with that that thing. Yeah. Which I've it's... Quite, uh, overcome. I think sometimes you need to take a break on a project to to know where to proceed. Yeah, to come at it with a fresh angle. Yeah, exactly. Um, I guess we sometimes put them on hold for a bit too long, but that's looking really good. Yeah, it's, you, it's getting there. Have you got a print of that spring so, available now? Yeah. Yeah, so this, I'll, I'll just quickly obviously show the, the mechanism actually works oh that's a lot more positive than it was before isn't it yeah yeah because previously it was a bit sort of sloppy on the return yeah you sort of had to jiggle it to get it, mm. to get it to yeah but it's quite positive isn't it man? yeah um it's not perfect this i don't know how well you can see but i can see it's it, yeah, not yeah, yeah. quite aligned so right the, well, this okay. this face of the spring isn't parallel to the the body oh i see so it's is it that because it's distorting was it twists that's, or um that's just down to getting some of the dimensions wrong for some of the outside wow. features 
what it means is when you use it that it'll slowly want to bring the spring out because like, yeah. it's almost acting like a thread so it's just a yeah. minor tweak um, okay but that, that does seem like you've overcome a major hurdle there really. yeah so that's the old design <clears throat> yeah so it's got a square arbor with obviously the spring yeah. and a little dovetail that goes into the enclosure just to yeah. stop you uh, getting your fingers caught in the spring um, and it's torsion, so you twist it and it coils up. Or yeah. twist it the other way and it'll, it'll uncoil. So that's when you're pushing the lever down that it's coiling it, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, what are you printing out that out of? This is just PLA. The spring itself yeah. is just PLA. It is 100% infill, but uh, I aimed for the entire thing for it to just be PLA or PTG, but since most people use PLA and it's probably one of the easiest ones to print with, then I was sticking for PLA for the spring as well. Mm. And that's what the this initial one was struggling with because it was so so springy that uh, or the spring rate was so low I should say that um, you would have to give it a lot of preload you would have to turn it like a full 360 degrees oh, before yeah. you mount it to the unit to get the strength to pull it up well back right mm. okay. and all yeah. of that preload breaks the spring pretty easily because of the right, yeah. the strain it's, it under, it's under more constant tension then isn't it yeah yeah whereas the new one is the the thickness of the coil is only about one mil thicker mm. but from the maths i've seen online it's sort of um a cubic so um an extra 60 percent in thickness yeah going from one and a half mil to two and a half mil resulted in basically four times the strength yeah and it's still a hundred percent infill it's all walls so it's all traveling did, along the route did you do a concentric infill then no the um, the well Which the way i did my settings my wall settings are normally about two mil anyway Oh, yeah, okay. I normally do quite thick walls because that's where yeah. most of the strength is, even on. Yeah, so, so there was no need for infill, it's just walls, yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, but it's turning out pretty well. I obviously need to see how it stands up over time. And this one isn't great. I need to change some of the dimensions, but it's. You need a servo rig on there, don't you, to. Test to it. To do a. Yeah, like once per 10 seconds or something and yeah. leave it go for a week and see what happens but i think the fact that i've managed to actually 3d print a spring suitable for it means if it yeah. breaks you just print another one yeah. depends on just how often yep. that is going to be but it's working all right so far mm -hmm. just need to get the rest of it finished now yeah oh Absolutely. Yeah, looking good. I also need to figure out a design for the handle as well. Because yeah. it is a bit... I'm trying to aim for the sort of the end of three build volume. You know, 200, 200. Which pretty much all of them, even the big foot, can fit in that. Yeah. Um, but the handle would ideally want to be, well, more than 200 mil long. Even across the diagonals, you're going to get about 300. So... Yeah. Uh, I'll need to well, think. Can, you, can you extend it by having something that kind of um, will fit around you it? Extend it, you're generating a weak point, aren't you, straight away? Yeah, I'll yeah, yeah. I, no, I understand that. But well, I would want you... one piece. I mean, it's not really going to be all that practical. I yeah, thought so it maybe a bit of aluminium extrusion or something. I don't know. Yeah. But uh, it's a complicated one. Yeah, maybe, I mean, maybe a socket joint or something, or just the, 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 hand, the actual handle could be thicker by, say, three mil on each side. Yeah. Sort of slip on with a screw to hold it in place. Yeah. Something is the, like the, the, um, the main black part, is that 2020? Uh, yeah, I'm oh, oh, sorry, this is 2040. Visa. Oh, 2040. 20 oh, right, okay. Yeah, 20 wide. Well, why, wide. why not make the arm 2020 and put a nice 3D printed handle on the end of it? Then you've got your strength, and then it would match the rest of it. Yeah, yeah, I could do. I'll have to. I'll have to see. I mean, it's this entire thing's been a uh, a lot of thoughts about how uh, 
how much do you want to rely on sourcing particular parts? You know, I could easily have gotten a nice beefy return spring, but I didn't want to... If someone wanted to recreate this, I didn't want to go to them and go, yeah, you need this specific spring yeah. from this minute. I mean, 20, it's kind of... you know, 2020 is a bit different, obviously. It's a yeah. pretty standard uh, well, construction material now. Yeah, um, I mean, you've locked you know, up there, was not me? No, nope, you. Um, yeah, you just paused there for a minute. Ah, <laughs> uh, sorry about that. You know, it's 20, uh, 2020 and 2040 are pretty standard construction material, so I yeah, don't yeah. think there would be much of a problem. But if you already need to buy a meter of 2040 and then another meter of 2020 just for 500 mil, say, yeah, it's uh, yeah. starting to add up in price. Whereas, yeah, I think I think the other part of the concept was that you wanted it to be all cot parts, didn't you? So off, come off shelf parts, so yeah. that you don't need special sourcing. So you can literally go down to your hardware store to get nearly all the bits. And yeah, exactly. You already have some PLA, so you could just use that to print. Yeah, it's all about reducing parts. the number of different parts that you would need to go out and buy. Because at the minute, it's 2040 extrusion, a reel of PLA, and then odd nuts and bolts and a couple of bearings. And they're all the mm. same bearings. So in reality, there's maybe five different parts you need to buy, which isn't bad for most sort of toolkits, I guess. Yeah. So your specialist, your most specialist bits, I think, are the bit for the soldering iron. Yeah. Soldering iron itself is a relatively you, you could adapt it to to take different ones, couldn't you? I think. Yeah, you can you can easily adapt it. It's literally just four bolt holes, and you can make a different clamp. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you're not then, even tied to that particular soldering iron. No, exactly. But this iron is one of those generic eBay parts. You just search, you know, mains soldering yeah. iron or whatever you can easily find a million and one different listings for the adjustable soldering iron with think, the controls on the handle i do think that the soldering iron is probably the bit that is most likely to change mm. out of all of them just simply because it's quite a competitive market and they that they aren't a standard part are they you know there's quite a lot of room in the soldering iron market for yeah. different factors and I think it will be stable for years, but I think in a decade's time, mm. nearly everything else will be the same, and the soldering iron is much more likely to have changed. Yeah, exactly. exactly. But then, because of, because the mounting for that is quite flexible, it mm. shouldn't be a problem. No, exactly. You know, but it is the my. I do have the concern of how obviously to make the disposable tip, or not disposable tip, the custom tip. Yeah, because obviously you would need someone with a lathe or have to uh, order it, and that would cost a lot of money. Mm. Is there not a way to use a standard um, chisel point? You can, you can use the standard and, and um, kind of modify it. I don't. Uh, yeah, I've got some chisel points in there that just come with the yeah. the iron. And they mm -hmm. work well enough, you know, they, it's about making sure that the, um, the insert aligns properly with the perpendicular to the table and the cylindrical shank of a custom tip, it basically gives you no room to move it, fully constrains it. Is there still a taper on the, um, the chisel point? Um, yeah, where so Bits, the, yeah. the chisel points and that uh, see if I can get one out um, typically have a small taper on them and obviously if you're doing the smaller insert sizes it probably won't be all that good either mm. uh, there we are. there's a there's a chisel point one yeah, yeah. oh I see the taper on there is quite dramatic isn't it really yeah. but that is, I suppose Maybe you can tell, you can say to people, look, you know, if you haven't got access to a lathe, then you can do this, but you a lathe is the better option, perhaps. Yeah, I mean, it works fine for M4. Yeah. But if you're doing anything bigger or smaller than M4, you might struggle. 
yeah, you could hacksaw the end off that, I guess, to um, mm. to make it, um, to, you know, so it doesn't melt the plastic. Yeah, to so make it flush. Yeah, exactly. I mean, one thing I did notice with these soldering irons um, was that the the tip just likes to wander off with vibrations because the screw is kind of badly designed. It will eventually just oh, work see. its way up and drop down. Yeah. Drop off. And obviously, if it's hot while it does that, the table, it, it'll just melt straight through the table. Could you put a bit of PTFE tape or something around the thread to maybe, maybe. lock it, perhaps? Because that part's quite cool on those irons, isn't it? Wouldn't want to put my hand on it. But... Well, no, it's. It, it, <laughs> it, 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 it... That's what happened to the last table. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Oops. When it fell through, just fell off. Yeah, mm -hmm. here's, here's one we destroyed earlier. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing about PLA, isn't it? It's, it's great for being low temperature, and it's a pain for being low temperature. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, but. yeah, what I might do is just get uh, if I plan on selling these unit or the um, designs anyway, is keep a whole bunch of kit tips in stock and sell them. As mm. the only thing yeah, yeah. that I sell, basically, and just say if you have this design and you want some tips, you can buy them from me for X amount. But they'll, mm -hmm. you know, you, I've got a mechanical drawing of it, so literally anyone could go to anyone with a lathe or a machine shop and just say, "Can you make some of these for me?" Yeah, you need to get yourself a um, a CNC lathe now, so you can turn them out. Yeah. Quantity. <laughs> yeah, I don't Maybe. think I'd need that many. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when, when you're selling a thousand of those a week, it might be. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And the China, get them to copy it for you. Hmm. Well, if it's open source, yeah, they would. Yeah, or true. Could. Uh, they, they, well, it, if they think they can sell it, yes, mm. for sure. Uh, but that's actually part of the aim. Yeah, exactly. That's what. Right, but MakerBot, MakerBot decided that you know they were going to open source their stuff from, from the beginning, mm -hmm. and they said, "Well, we wanted to create a three D printer revolution," um, but they hadn't figured it on it taking the small amount of time it did they thought they were going to get like eight to ten years hmm. before they, they did themselves out of a market and it happened within about three yeah. <laughs> which from their perspective philosophically was a resounding success but business-wise it was suicide for them really mm -hmm. um Good on them for doing it, and they've stuck around, but it was very, very difficult for them, I think, mm. because of that decision. I think they had factored in that it would take longer and not realised that what they were on to was something that was going to be so big. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, certainly, all these 3D printers that we've got probably wouldn't have existed without people like RepRap and MakeBot. Yeah. Because they just, you know, it would have remained a big industrial thing, and there w there would still be the three D systems ones and the what's that one that you use the Stratasys Stratasys yeah all those kind of things which cost thousands and tens mm -hmm. of thousands, but there wouldn't be any two hundred and fifty quid ones. Yeah, exactly. So we we have to thank them for that. Mm -hmm. Thank them for their sacrifice. <laughs> yes. Uh, anyway, Andy, have you worked on anything interesting this week? Uh, this week I have mostly been doing sanding. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I've been using my, my new multi-tool. I've got a sander attachment to that. And it is a total game changer. It is very, very different from using a standard sander or even a mouse sander. Mm. Uh, so definitely pleased with that tool. So, um, not an expensive one and I'm not really much of a shockingly for a geek I'm not much of a, a gadgets person but that this is the, the tool mm -hmm. uh, with 
that sounder bit on it. And it's also got it, obviously. Mm. These kind of rounded serrated blades and plunge blades as well, which are really neat because you can cut boxes out of wood and that's, that's really quite neat. Also got a tungsten carbide coated um, sanding thing. It's meant for doing like tiles and things, mm -hmm. but I've used it really effectively for getting the, the rough bits and splinters off um, pallet wood. Really quick for that in a way that I hadn't expected. It, it is like 10 times faster than than other things and it doesn't wear down. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, quite quite a lot of use of that tool this week. Fair enough. Taking regular breaks, Emily. Good, good. <laughs> Don't want you getting halves. Yeah, yeah. Well, to to be honest, the main driver behind that has been I've been doing most of that sanding out in the backyard, mm. and it's been like five to seven degrees. So by the time my toes are gone numb, I need a break anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, other things this week. Um, been trying to work out a backlighting scheme for these lithophanes that I'm going to make mm -hmm. for Christmas present. And I found that, which is a cob LED ah. on our like, wafer. I've attached the wire to it. Mm -hmm. um, massively bright. I'm going to put it on. Uh, right, you see me lit up there? Yep. Uh, put it on the dim setting. Oh, it's strobing. <laughs> you can see that in the camera. Um, so behind a bit of gash PLA does that, mm. which seems to work quite well. If I orient it, so this is oriented flat. Mm -hmm. It works pretty well, that. Turn that off. So, so, yeah, I think that's solved. And that is one of these one-pound shop... Um, headlamps that mm. I would never use because I couldn't bear to look so silly um, <laughs> as having one of those. But you get a bit of elastic, so I can make a catapult for the kids up the back. <laughs> um, but this Cobb LED module is really neat, and it comes with a nice little uh, momentary action switch there and a little chip that controls it. Mm. Which, um, so I'm, I'm trying to work out how to incorporate that into a lithophane to, as a backlight. Mm -hmm. But I think that's solved that particular problem. Mm. Um, because what I want is to mount a piece, uh, a lithophane onto a piece of pallet wood, which is going to be the frame of a picture um, frame thing that you can put photos up onto on pegs, little tiny pegs we've got. Um, and I just want the lithophane to be there, looking anonymous, and then with a button that you can press that will make it light oh. up. And have um, a family photo there or something that only mm. shows when you push the button. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, That'd be neat. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. So the only downside of this one is it's got three modes. It's got blindingly bright, only slightly blindingly bright and seizure inducing strobe effect. <laughs> yeah. Which is like, I don't know why you would ever want it to flash like that. I can understand like a, a blink, but this is like full on isn't trance it, music. Isn't it like SOS kind of thing? Maybe. Um, it, it's. Well, stick, stick it onto a strobe and I'll tell you. Oh, okay. Oh, here we go. I don't, I don't think it's going to be SOS, to be honest. No, it's not. It's not Morse, right? So this is the the not so bright one. Yeah. And this is the strobe. Oh wow, that right. is I... that is fast. Yeah. Um, that's more, and you're probably faster, not getting the full frame rate that I am. Yeah. I, yeah. It's 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 a bit unpleasant. Unfortunately, the chip on there is probably not configurable, so I'm gonna have to live with that. I mean, there are other cob lights out there that just provide you the LED. Yeah, I know, but I just needed to get one that was the, a nice form factor without having to spend a long time looking for it. To be and... fair, they are all on pound land and whatever these days. Yeah. yeah. I bought one but... that was a little 
key for your key ring that just you just press a button. Yeah, I, oh yeah, is that the one which looks like a, um, a cinema sign where you can put little letters on it? It's got like two rows. Not quite. No, but it literally that, just looks like I... a key with the the shank of the key being a cob LED. Oh right, yeah. You just um, press the button, it turns on. Press the button, it turns off. Okay, I haven't seen those. Hmm. I don't know if they still do them in Townland, but uh... yeah, they, they. I think they change their stock quite regularly. Some things stay around for a long time, but other stuff is quite ephemeral. Yeah, um, I uh, don't think I've got any lying about, unfortunately. But yeah, so I've, that that will do as a solution. It's it's not the best, but and I I could probably bypass the the little chip. Mm. I mean, because there's nothing to it you've got that chip and you've got i don't know if that's a diode or a capacitor it's an smd device so it's like it's a yeah. two mil device no idea what that is with is it that uh, one. black My... it's black yeah it's typically a resistor okay yeah mm. probably just current um, limiting for it yeah poss- most likely then yeah um so what i could probably do is because the circuit is so simple, I can probably just make it so that it only lights up when you push the button. Mm. So I might I might have a go at doing that. Yeah. Um, but it's still surface mount, so it's yeah, feasible. But it's got an aluminium heat sink on the back, which is the whole back surface is just a piece of aluminium. Mm-hmm. So I think the PCB is like half a mil thick. Yeah. Or it may even just be paint on top of that LED, on, on top of the aluminium. Um, you can get so, um, aluminium substrates for PCBs. Mm, it is literally yeah, a like layer of, layer of aluminium and then a layer of fiberglass. Yeah, well, obviously the, to it. Yeah, because cob lights do need a, a heat sink, don't they? Mm-hmm. Um, and evidently, that's what the heat sink is. Yeah. So that's quite interesting. Um, and I've been messing around with LED strips as well. Um, so you know the tower lights that I built. The yep. Tower. I remember from was it last? Yeah. Week? Oh, was, I think that might have been the week before. So I got some of these LED strips. Oh, yeah, I got, I got loads of those. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, fool that I am, I decided to modify the controller for it because I didn't like the way that the power lead went in, um, and it, it's covered in heat shrink like this so i got my cutters these are pliers but i got my cutters and went and i heard a crunch yeah so that that broke it didn't it um i I knocked the corner off um an smd one and a half mil smd which is literally just a grain of sand on the board Mm -hmm. and um and it doesn't work now. Mm. You plug it in, it flashes briefly, and then that's it. It's dead. So I've had to order another board. Oh, well. But fortunately, they're not expensive. I felt the fool. It happens. It's a valuable learning experience. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I I was being. I thought I was being careful. I should have mm. used a skull board. But... Yeah. You live and learn. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um made some changes to me christmas cards oh yeah I remember from last time but i've now got silver on there too oh yeah where'd you Not get that, that from so uh, adam gave me that and i also um, got a gold as well ah which, right uh, yeah andy gave well, me that. that yeah cool. but uh, the gold still I'll turned out really you again. yeah show us again let's show again then, man. ah sorry this these christmas cards Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yes. You remember from yeah. last week or yeah, yeah. before? Yeah, yeah. They come out good. Black originally, yeah. But these came out yeah. really well. I mean, so how did you get that inlaid though? Did you three D print it and stick it in, or you? No, so it's uh, it's all one piece. Well, the front cover is all one piece. The back cover is all its own. Oh, I see. So that's actually the back part. Got you. Right. Okay. Yeah. So it's three layers. I don't know how well yeah. you can mm-hmm. see that, but there's yeah. three layers. Yeah, we can there. See it. Um, it is a bit mandrolic having to change the colours three times a print, basically once an hour. Um, I really need to get my two-colour printer working. 
so but, be uh, oh. came out well i think yeah you know i've been having problems with the hinges they always need a bit of tidy up because of the tolerances of them mm. um but i found that uh there's a small chamfer on the on the end of the hinge but mm. not in the middle sections here and it's always these two i have to clean up so i might just chamfer all of them all the way down oh right so, so when you insert the piece of filament for the hinge rod it it doesn't go all the way through. Yeah. yeah. Right. I think it's to do with the, the tiny little travel move where it just, it's not even a millimetre. Mm. It just warps it at that point, whereas on a corner it spends so little time there that it doesn't warp as much. Mm. I think that's what my theory is anyway, so I need to uh, modify that and, and um, try again. But I've got almost five cards at this point. Which is a fair bit of printing. Yeah. yeah. It's nearly quite weighty, I think. Yeah, that's at least half a kilo of plastic. <laughs> I don't know if you that's can feel it. your fortune in postage. Yeah, well, I've got a book of stamps, and it's about uh, two, two stamps for a large letter. A book of stamps yeah. for each one? Is that right? It's, uh, it's going up, isn't it? Mm. 90 odd P, it's going to be first class. It's crazy. Yeah, exactly, wow. but uh, I designed these to fit in. Uh, some envelopes that I've got, and with the weight, it puts it a large letter, which is two stamps. Okay, that's not too bad, is which it? isn't that bad. Hmm. I picked up a bargain today. Did you, Andy? Yeah. What did you pick? I up? was in Wellington for the toy swap thing. Oh, right. And uh, went out to get lunch and have a bit of a wander around. I went into. Um, cash providers mm -hmm. second hand shop and i got this neat which is a reciprocating saw mm -hmm. um it's a cheap unbranded chinese one uh, but it seems to be quite sturdy okay but that was the kicker that was why Thank sorry it's a tenner for it the cheap chinese ones on ebay are about 40 quid I've got to buy some blade for it, but I I reckon that was quite a quite a decent buy, mm. and I didn't get in too much trouble buying that. So yeah, exactly. So neat that good saving. Well, I'm hoping that that should make it a little bit easier to disassemble the awkward types of pallets. Mm -hmm. uh, because you can get blades that are suitable for wood, but also cut nails. Okay. Mm. So that's that's my intention for that. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And also for possibly doing large-scale jigsaw work. Um, because I've been thinking of doing kind of panel things with cutouts. Mm -hmm. Um Nothing's crystallised down to a design yet, but, but basically thinking along the lines of plywood and cutting shapes out of it, which would be a bit of a nightmare to do with the standard um, just ordinary jigsaw mm -hmm. because of the, the size of it. Mm. Um, jigsaws, I've found, tend to get quite difficult to use when you're cutting large curves over long, over long distances mm -hmm. because your physical arm reach and they don't work very well vertically so if you've got your board up against the wall or propped yeah you can't easily use a jigsaw because when you start to come down with it whereas with these you can turn them in your hand so my thought is you can go sort of up <laughs> i'm trying to up that way and then that and you can turn it as you get to the apex and mm -hmm. I'm hoping anyway. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Yeah, exactly. It's worth giving a shot for a tenner, especially. Yeah, that's what I thought. Mm. Fair enough. Fair enough. And do what you want to do. Stick on eBay for twenty quid. You'll sell it. Yeah, that's the thing. That was another uh, another thought. Is that if it doesn't turn out, this has never been used either. It still came with the plastic shield on the plug. <laughs> Wow, and um, you can tell it's never been used because 
There's no See this bit on here. Yeah. It's got no scratches on it. There's no yeah. dust around here. Um, so it is absolutely brand new. Just doesn't come with a free blade and carry box or mm. so. Yeah, right. Fair oh. enough. Must have come from a hoarder's house then. I think. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's been hoarded very long, mind you, because it, it it doesn't mm. have that old feel to it. Yeah. And it still smells of factory. You know, that kind of... Yeah, um, the burnt electronics smell. No, more more the the, the rubbery smell because um, it's got uh, pet G... Ah. No, not pet G, what's it called? Uh, TPU. on on here, which always smells a bit rubbery. And this mm. piece is like a hard sort of flexible plastic mm -hmm. um, um yeah it has that sort of slightly burnt rubber smell yeah um so you plugged it in and tried it i have it worked yeah though i don't have a blade for it so i can't see what it's like under load but um it it whizzes it makes a whizzy noise you make me do it now <laughs> it'll go bang now <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then that will be your fault. You love jinxed it. I do, yeah. Oh, and I have video proof that you, you admit, admitted to it. Here we go. So. Oh, and it's adjustable as well, so that was the minimum. Of go. What a cow. <laughs> yes, yeah, loud. Wow. Uh, but it's also got a variable speed control, so you can. So that seems to be quite, hmm. yeah. For a tenor, that's impressive. Yeah, exactly, for a tenor. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. Hmm. They also had a Black & Decker Sabre saw up there. So you know the one that we've got at the Makerspace? Mm -hmm. um, that was donated by Sean from the Man Sheds. Yeah. And um, it's quite a nice saw. That's why I wanted one of those, really. Um, mm -hmm. but it's it's been beaten up a bit. So that they have another model very similar to that one. It's still called a scorpion saw, and um, that was up two ninety nine. Oh right. And I that's what I was initially looking at, and I, I noticed this other one which was underneath the pile of other tools. I had to ask yeah. to open it up and get it out. And it's like a ten. I thought oh, that's it's actually brand new. I'll, I think I'll have that one. But it turns out that the Scorpion Saw is reduced in home base at the moment to 51 quid. <laughs> There's a bit of a plastic guard thing that you... It's like it swings down from, from the front. It doesn't have this arrangement um, on the, those Black & Decker ones. It doesn't have a foot like mm. this. Um, it's just literally... It doesn't have any of that arrangement. It's just the blade sticks out and you just use that. Um, there's a kind of a bulkhead on the front of the tool, but it that are broken off. I mean, it's, mm. there's a part it swings back, so you can have it in place or not, depending on what sort of work you're doing. Um, and it was missing, but for three quid, I think it might still be worth getting. Mm. <laughs> it's not as high powered as that one. Um, I think it's like. That, that one's 600 watts. I think this one was like 300 or something. Yeah. Did look at it in great detail because I've already decided I wanted the red one. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Oh, yeah. Um, Paul, before I forget, now that you've got your uh, direct drive, you can do flexibles as well. Well, yeah, yeah. more success. Yeah. Well, I've never done flexibles, so that was one of the things I was going to um, have a look at. I mean, yeah. if. If you want to try, we could let you borrow some of the TPU at the Makerspace. Yeah. We've got about three quarters of a roll. Mm. Yeah, we have. If you, if you wanted to borrow it to have a have a quick try. I'll let us know what you learned. Yeah, yeah you know. give it a go. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's actually quite an easy thing we found to... to print with but obviously we do know that using a back tube is a big no-no with this stuff so the um 
the one how that we've got at the makerspace is a direct drive already yep. that's part of the design so that's why we used it on that one and it, the, the results are actually pretty good weren't they the first yeah. few months we did i mean it, they, they um, are all been spectacular you, you, there's a learning curve but it's it's not it, as hard as i thought it was going to be. the big thing is warping mm. i think if you can fix the warping issue after the first couple layers it's pretty typical to see a corner or two warping but this don't forget the maker space is cold and drafty yeah but that could be the maker space that could be and, the bowden I, I don't know but, well um, yeah, sorry we were using oh, yeah. yeah so so i think it's more likely to do with the fact that it has a glass bed mm. and so adhesion on the glass bed is different and i suspect that um tpu doesn't bond well to the glass yeah what about what about pla do you get bond um warping on your pla sometimes yeah um that's usually mitigated by using the cabinet that we've got around it um mm. if you get it nice and warm inside there then you get much less of that yeah um also increasing the bed temperature can help yeah, mm -hmm. yeah some of some of the, the larger things i've printed um i, I did a look, I, I did the usual thing when I first got my printers. I printed a load of um, small trays, screw trays, screw tools, and Allen key trays, and all sorts of trays. I've got them all over the place. Yeah. Um, and I always used to get warping uh, with the edges, which is just lift just a fraction of a millimeter. But yeah. you know, it's it's everything else would be absolutely fine on the print. Just a little bit of a warping. I got yeah. around that. I make sure the back door was shut when I was printing for a start. Um, but also using a raft, um, just a just a, a, a two mil raft, yeah. solved my warping issues. Yeah, right. Okay. Rafts are right, those I... things that are almost kind of controversial with people who operate printers. Some people love them, some people don't. Yeah, I've never had success with Repetier and rafts, but with Cura. And the rafts that that makes, I've had good success with them. Yeah. And I don't know what it is about Repetier. Maybe it's just using an older version of Cura or something that uh, doesn't like rafts. But uh, I've had reasonable results. I don't think it's worth the waste, though. You're going forward, isn't it? If yeah. it's something that you're doing for somebody else and you want it to be spot on, mm -hmm. it's worth uh, you know an extra meter or so. Uh, yeah, exactly. Material for to make a raft. Um, yeah, exactly. That's why I wasn't. I wasn't. I got a moth flying around in here. What? <laughs> I ended up. Use, I ended up using some supports um, the other day because. Um, so we found my, my kids at the moment are really have gone all in with Among Us. Mm -hmm. So they're really fanatical. This is like the the eight year old, ten year old, and the older kids as well. So we decided, well, let's print some Among Us figures just that they can, like, you know, as a stocking filler, little thing. And so there's, like, little, yeah, I like that one. Those yeah, fellas. You found the same one as I did, I think. Probably, um, yeah. Is that an integral face mask or not? No, it's like a little D-shaped piece. Ah, uh, right. Yeah, okay, so it's a slightly different design. I did see that one, but I went for the one which was um, all in one. Yeah. Um, so our plan is because I had a load of this transparent PLA. Here's a here's a an Among Us figure foot that from one that failed, um, and that transparent stuff I just needed to use up. So that's why I've been doing big prints mm -hmm. with it because I just wanted to get rid of it. Mm. Truth. Um, so I printed off a load of those Among Us figures, but um, they have some quite vicious overhangs, don't they? The backpack particularly. Yep. And so I ended up having to use supports for that because it was going spaghetti underneath there. Mm. And um, yes, I I tweaked my support um, parameters so that I had a wider gap between the support and the um, the piece, the object. Yeah, the bit that's printing above. Uh, mm -hmm. And I improved it quite well. So it, the the last three that I did were far far better and didn't need any real cleanup mm. there's just a little bit of um sort of some slight warping on, on the bottom edge of that 
backpack where it is a massive overhang. And I think I probably could have improved that by having a larger infill on the um, on the support. I've got it cranked back to ten percent, I think. So it only it literally does two lines in a. In, in fact, no, I've, got, uh, no I've, I've broken it. I've been fiddling, and I've got a, a bunch of some broken mm. plastic on my desk here from from one of those. Um, but I found that they. They do work far better with supports, and they were quite easy to remove as well. Because that's yeah. one of the problems that I've had in the past with using supports and yeah. raft is that removing the support or raft destroys or damages the part, hmm. or you simply can't get it off very yeah. easily. Um, and so I'd largely given up using supports where possible hmm. because of the the extra work involved and yeah. the risk of, it's, of damaging it. Mm. It's always and good it, practice to do it without supports if you can, especially if you're designing it yourself. Yeah. Designing with mm, avoiding supports in mind is definitely worth it. Yeah, I like that. I mean, that's um, what I liked about the, um, this cyclone um, yeah. that, that printed. That's, what, that's one of the failed ones. Mm-hmm. And that was designed to print without supports, and because they've used um, forty-five degree angles or for everything, mm. um, it does print really well without supports. Uh-huh. I mean, it's it that's um, 0.4 layer height, and it it really feels quite mm. sturdy. Quite surprised. It's very thin walls, but yeah, looks it. Oh, part of me. If it wasn't for the uh, Y shift error, mm-hmm. look at this. These are supposed to be straight. Turns out that they're under driving the Y stepper motor. Right. Um, so I've done a tweak and um, I haven't printed anything tall enough to prove it yet. <laughs> so. Um, but apparently what happens, because they're under-driving the Y stepper motor, it's a larger stepper motor and it has a lower voltage yeah. applied to it than the um, Z and X stepper mm-hmm. motors, which are smaller stepper motors. Um, and so this guy's done a calculation and reckons that you can drive it at a higher um, current mm-hmm. um, and recommends that you tweak the x-axis pot up to one volt Mm. from 0.6 the other ones are at 0.8 and apparently solves that problem i've yet to prove otherwise but we'll we will see i'll I'll get i'll print something eventually that hopefully will uh, prove that i'm not going to print another one of these because they do take a mammoth amount of time to print Um, yeah exactly I need to do some really big prints soon so the insert press needs a new table obviously <laughs> you'd mm. seen the the whole left in the old one the, yeah, yeah. the foot had actually changed shape as well it's got a bit of a dip in it now so that you can keep the the, the inserts and the fiddly bits in there oh right just like a little trough is it yeah just, just for a bit of convenience just a little yeah. tray um so the thought is, even if you're doing a tall object, you'll still use the ta- the movable table, and then you still have a little trough underneath that you can just pick up and insert oh, and yeah. put it on top. Yeah, that's handy, isn't it? Just yeah. Uh, time and motion. I'm going to have to drop off, guys. Yeah, no worries. Fair enough. Thank you All right, Paul, thanks for coming on anyway. Hey, no worries, no worries. I shall uh, no doubt speak to you guys again. All right. Okay, cool. Bye. 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 But yeah, lots of printing to do, because... I think last mm-hmm. time I did the foot, it was about 17 hours. Yeah, that's a mass. That's a bit of an investment, isn't it, really? Yeah, but uh, fortunately, my Ender 3 doesn't suffer from a lot of warping. That foot is completely flat. All the cards are flat, so... Yeah, um, you've got the magnetic um, base, haven't you? Yep. Uh, Got one of the flexible so polymer beds. The texture on those is is quite good for preventing warping mm-hmm. as well, though, isn't it? Yeah, they 
they can be a bit fussy though i found if your bed leveling is slightly too close then it will mushroom out really badly right and then it will cause warping later on that will will fail the print and yeah. if it's the tiniest bit too far away it will completely not stick it has to be at the just the right height literally like microns difference yeah. whereas i haven't found that with glass or the traditional bed materials mm -hmm. so it's interesting that but uh i don't know it's been doing all right to be fair recently it did all the cards without any sticking issues yeah still got uh one three more prints to do so okay. a card and a half basically i need a front cover for this one and then i need one yeah. more card <laughs> and then i'll be done i think and i'll have three gold three silver and one black which i've already sent oh. yeah so is that all your christmas cards done then yeah i'm only focusing on close family at this point yeah although if I... it's one spare i might send them to a colleague who likes this kind of 3d printed stuff yeah but obviously i've already shown you guys so you ain't getting none <laughs> well we, we we get the pleasure of seeing them earlier yes yeah, you get the early access to it <laughs> but uh hey one of them Oop. right i think with that we'll uh we'll end it here it's been just over an hour yeah it has that's quite a good and, chat uh, yeah i'll make sure this goes on youtube yeah, cool. We need to start publicising this. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be at so. least doing uh, a, a small post to go out. You know, Facebook, Twitter, and yeah, if if you let LinkedIn and that. Yeah, if you let me know, then I'll get it put up okay. on Facebook as well as Twitter. Yeah, no worries. Okay, okay. Catch right, you later. In a bit. Bye. Bye.